Well, it's great to escape that very packed exhibition hall at the TFWA show just behind us and get out here in the harbour onto the good ship Chase. And I'm with the captain of the good ship, James Chase. James, your family story is some journey from farmers to crisp makers to producers of one of the world's fastest growing craft spirits brands. Tell us about that journey. Our, our roots are very much in Herefordshire and that's where my family has been farming for over four generations. I think what's remarkable about, about Chase and, and, and our company is that we're so steeped in farming history. And I think, um, I think you look at any luxury market and if any, any producer could actually control their raw ingredients, they would do and very much typifies what we do here at Chase. Um, yeah, so we are a field to bottle distillery, which is very unique. Um, but the story starts with my father, William. Uh, some or most would say he's a, he's a maverick potato farmer, uh, which is very true, um, but he, uh, he, he's very passionate about potatoes. He always says they've made him laugh and they've made him cry, but um, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll make him laugh for a few more years to come. Um, we, 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 we started farming it with, with great granddad um, in Herefordshire. Um, Herefordshire is one of the best places in the world to grow potatoes. Um, and, and we really struggled, I think, as a family in, in the 90s big supermarkets pushed the price down um, and, and we needed to diversify so almost cutting to the chase came back from college in about 2001 and my father had literally built a deep fat fryer in the, in the workshop and, and, and from that um, spawned the brand or well, quite a household brand now Tyrrell's crisps or Tyrrell's chips as we like to call them it was a posh crisp um, very much using the potatoes that we'd grown on the farm um, but why, why do we get into spirits and why we're here at Cannes well um, in about 2007, it was on a, a trip to New York, and we were researching deep fat frying. Where else do you go other than America than <laughs> other than America to, to look at it? And um, out there, we saw the rise of craft craft spirits yet to kind of really happen in the UK. And like anything, it it it, uh, it started in a bar one night, and um, soon led back at the distillery, realizing we had a huge amount of smaller potatoes, too small to make um, make the crisps. And obviously, my father had a, had a great idea of building that the UK's first first distillery in 2008 um, and, and the first bottle of Chase Volker came off the line in, in, in April. We always say April Fool's Day um, but we went on to win a numerous awards and probably the best one was in San Francisco when we got dubbed the, the world's best tasting vodka. From there, unlike a lot of gin distilleries, we, we, we make our gin from scratch using this very potato vodka and, uh, and, and we're sat here on a boat in Cannes celebrating our 10th anniversary with, uh, with new packaging. There were some other things in between that, but um, I'll keep it short. Well, a very interesting <laughs> journey. And of course, you, you started with vodka, as you said, which is a natural affiliation from the potato. Yeah. When you went into gin, was the whole craft gin thing already starting to burgeon worldwide, or were you slightly ahead of the curve? No, if, even if you look back to 2008, 2009, there was still a handful of brands on the market, you know, of which were either owned by big multinationals or some very few made, made in big industrial distilleries. Um, I have a huge passion for gin and I love gin from all, all places, but, but really the gin revolution has kind of really gathered a pace in the, just the last five years. I think, I think in the UK last year, over 200 brands were released and recognized. So the whole market has gone gin mad, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it certainly has, has evolved. Does that excite you or worry you that there's just so much competition out there on the market? Not just the big boys, of course, who you took on very successfully, but now are so many newcomers. I think, um, I think if you're passionate about it and believe in something, it will, it will happen. But, um, but I, yeah, there is, there, is, there is a huge amount of competition. Um, I think mainly because it's so easy to get gin produced. You know, a lot of these producers are simply buying in a spirit and redistilling or, or getting somebody else to make it for them. Um, but but as uh, of Chase, I think we've really started to. I mean, our mission was to was to get people as interested in craft spirits and feel to bottle spirits as we are, me and Dad are. And um, I, I really think people now are, are looking a bit more behind just a fancy bottle and actually understanding where that spirit is from. You you would never dream of buying a nice bottle of wine over thirty pounds without not knowing the terroir, the vineyard, or the even the winemaker on YouTube. And I think we're now just starting to see people people look a bit more beyond the the Instagram page or the, or the brand story. Craft at its purest, I suppose, is about provenance. It's about authenticity. You've certainly got those by the spadeful, <laughs> as it were. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I think we, 
we can't take all the credit. I think at the end of the day, people buy off people. And I think you can, you can generally have the best product in the world. But I really do say it's probably down to a lot of the, the team that we have at Chase, you know, fighting against the billion dollar budgets that the big guys have. Um, you know, our guys go into a bar, yes, with a great product, but, but at the end of the day, it's them selling themselves and, and how they come across as a, as a person. So me and dad started it, but it's certainly down to our team now taking the company forward. And um, yeah, we're really proud of, of what we've achieved and really looking forward to kind of the next 10 years, I think. All right, let's just roll you back a, a little bit once more, though, James. Um, you, you were a successful farming family, as you said. Then yep. you took on the big boys in the, in the very different world of, yep. of potato crisps or chips yeah. <laughs> um, and did spectacularly well, spectacularly so. Yep. In terms of what you've done with spirits and your brand success story with Tyrrells, is there a lot of common ground? I think so. I think if you're, I think there's a lot of hard work and there's a lot of luck involved too. And I think, um, you know, I think the harder you work, the luckier you become and the more opportunities you open up. Um, Dad's uh, a relentless energy, I think, is very apparent in the whole cult culture of our company. Um, but we, we've got a lot to prove. And I think, um, I think when you're selling your passion, it's a, it's a lot easier. So obviously there's days like today when you're on a boat in Cannes and very fortunate to be here. But um, yeah, we, we really enjoy what you do, and that's, I think, given to anything. I think whatever you do in life, you've got to love it. Otherwise, you've got to, you've got to move jobs. But um, you know, we've got so much to, that we want to achieve now over the next 10 years, for sure. All right, let's just talk about Cannes for a moment, and we'll talk with your head of travel retail, Andrew Carter, in a moment. But you've clearly uh, been very prominent in travel retail and duty-free. In, in the UK, you seem to have targeted that channel as great for not just sales, but for visibility. You've yep. done a really outstanding exclusive yep. um, at Heathrow Airport. Just tell us what drew you to travel retail and ro what role do you see it playing for the company? I think, I think airports in particular are a great, great gateway to the world. And as you've seen the numbers over the last year, the amount of people flying now, it's just incredible how many people are so uh, connected all around the world. Um, so we see it really as a great, 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 a great gateway into our brand and, and a great showcase of our brand. And I think the British, because we're an island, we've always been travellers at heart. And, um, and I think we, we want to embody that with our spirits of actually bottling up the, the best of the British countryside for people to take away either back home or, or, or with them to go and see, see their families. And whether it's a member of the royal family flying through or somebody late for a business meeting in Geneva, I think um, there's, there's both cases where Chase would love to be used. And, 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 and I think it's a message of, of flying the flag back, um, back across the, the pond all, all around the world. All right. yeah. Really strong platform created so far. James, what's the vision going forward? Um, well, we've got, we've got lots to do. Uh, there's a lot more education out there, I think, about how spirits are made. I think if you're going to spend your, your hard-earned money on something, I think you, you should really deserve to know where it's come from. And I think you've seen that a lot with the restaurant world now. A lot of the best chefs in the world would would want to control or even grow their raw ingredients. So we've, we've got a lot of work to do with that and to, to get people uh, as interested in field-to-bottle spirits as we are. Um, but the main thing is just to have fun. I think, um, yeah, we're in, we're in a really you know, fantastic industry and with, with loads of great people, and we can't um, can never forget just to not, not have a bit of fun along the way. Uh, it's been fun being on <laughs> Good Ship Chase today, James. <laughs> and you uh, so may much, you sail Martin. safely and successfully long into the future. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm with Andrew Carter, the Global Commercial Director at Chase Distillery, a youthful veteran. <laughs> and I put the emphasis on youthful, Andrew, of both the drinks trade and the travel retail sector. Tell us about your role at Chase Distillery. Yeah, look, I've been uh, very fortunate to join the board of Chase uh, back at the start of 2018. So I'm a Global Commercial Director looking after all of our international and domestic uh, sales and uh, marketing business. Tell us about this challenge relative to others you've had in your very successful career in the, in the spirits and, and TR industry with big multinational brands. Now you're with a, a very fast growing, family owned craft spirits brands. Yep. How different is that challenge? Yeah, look, I, I've been very, very lucky to work for some fantastic global brands like uh, Bombay Sapphire and, uh, and Penfolds. But uh, for me, the, the absolute joy, and it's a real joy to, to be working for a small entrepreneurial business is that uh, I'm working with a great team of people at Chase Distillery who are really challenging the norm in terms of uh, how we produce spirits, uh, the full transparency from the moment we plant the potato in the field all the way through to making the Chase vodka into our Chase gin. And uh, 
with that comes a very, very different culture. Um, when you're the small guy, um, you have to fight a lot harder to get simple things done, like a share of mind and a meeting. But uh, I'm working with a great team, and uh, I think we're off to a very, very good start in the world of travel retail. Now, part of that very good start has obviously been the travel retail channel. You put a lot of focus on that. Speaking yep. to James Chase earlier on, he, he said that right from early days, travel retail had been seen as, as very key to growing the visibility of, of the brand. How do you see the channel, having been a, a veteran of it, as I said, for, for many years? No, I've, um, this is my 15th year at uh, Cannes, and uh, obviously uh, you've probably done about double that, Martin, but uh, I think uh, you know, everyone understands the importance of what is the sixth continent, and uh, in terms of the traveling through airports, whether you're uh, on a cruise or whether you're on an airline, it's a great shop window for, for premium brands, and uh, you know, we're looking to establish GB not just in our homeland, but to take JGB gin and our gin flavors into the rest of the world. And therefore, the natural gateway, the natural shop window is, uh, is global travel retail. All right, not just premium brands either, craft brands. Now, that was, an, that was a term we didn't really even hear of in no. travel retail as recently as, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. And now it's all the rage. What, no. to you, really constitutes a craft brand? Mm. And why does, why does Chase fit that definition? Now look, I think it's a really good question. I actually think craft is slightly becoming overused, but you, you go back, we celebrate 10 years this year. It's our 10th our anniversary. And uh, when William Chase founded the Chase brand back in 2008, he was truly a pioneer. He was a pioneer of the craft spirit movement. And for me, that's being able to trans, you know, transparently see everything from when you plant your ingredients in the ground to ultimately when they, they end up as a, as a great drink on a bar. And that's the joy of working for a small, small company. So, you know, we have the potatoes, we grow, the, we grow the potatoes, we take the potatoes, we make the base Chase Vodka spirit out of that, and then actually we use that Chase Vodka to make GB. It's a little known fact that most gins, or all gins, are, are made from vodka, they're made from a neutral spirit. And, uh, yeah, I think in terms of that craft, that level of authenticity, you've got to be able to trace each step of the journey. And uh, as a small company, that's absolutely key to us. Yeah, you've certainly led the charge mm. among craft gins, for example, and in the UK. As we talked to James mm. about earlier though, there's a plethora <laughs> of newcomers in yep. the market. It, it, it must be daunting on the one hand, but also satisfying in that there is such momentum behind the category. No, it is. It's absolutely extraordinary. There's, what, 300 odd new gin distilleries. It's probably gone up another 10 since uh, yesterday. Uh, you see great examples of brands that also have done a great job, like Sipsmith, that then have been acquired by, by bigger companies. But uh, from our perspective, we remain very, very true to our family roots. Uh, we're very focused on now growing globally. Uh, we're in over 40 markets from a domestic point of view. And therefore, whilst our travel retail strategy has been very focused around World GD3 Group, and it's been very focused around our UK customers. We're now looking to expand out, and uh, a great example of that would be uh, with Dubai Duty Free, where we're working very closely across uh, the UAE airports. All right, what's the future look like for Chase? Uh, well, I think first of all, we're very focused on our core uh, vodka and uh, Chase GB gin products. Um, that's the heart of our brand, and we really want consumers to buy into that brand. That's where we're looking to create brand desire. Uh, but obviously the market has moved very rapidly into flavours, particularly in the world of uh, flavoured gin. And uh, so we've got a fantastic range of flavours, uh, our pink grapefruit and pomelo. We also have our Seville marmalade and orange, and then we have our new rhubarb and Bramley apple. And we're like, like we've done with our core GB gin, we're taking the flavour opportunity, but we're really making sure that it's fully transparent where we actually get our flavours from, how we make our juices, how we actually make super premium flavoured gins. Well, talking about that all and looking at it all, Andrew, makes me feel rather thirsty. Always. It is lunchtime, or almost lunchtime. Yep. I think we should close this moment with a little drink. What yeah. are we drinking, Andrew? We are drinking a Chase, Chase a GB gin and tonic, always with our perfect serve, which is a slice of ginger. Well, here's to the perfect serve. Here's to Chase Distillery. Good Cheers. health and to the next 20 years of can. Thanks.